As we prepare our hearts for communion, I'd like to read from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, starting at the 17th verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. You know, it reminds us that we're reconciled to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, God, he saw our condition. He saw our sin. And the only way to be reconciled to him was his son had to pay the price so we might be made right with him. And so today as we take communion, we celebrate and we receive what he did for us. You know, we don't just, we don't just think about it, but, you know, we receive it. We take it in. You know, this is what he did for us. He died for us. He died for our sins. And so as you receive communion today, receive everything that he did for us. Receive all that he has done for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the privilege we have to come and to receive your body and blood, Lord, and all that you've done for us. The Lord, when we didn't deserve it, you who knew no sin took sin on yourself. And you paid the price for our sin. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for paying a debt that we could not pay. So, Lord, just receive, be with us now as we receive all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, the ushers will come up and they'll pass out the elements. You can take off the top part and get ready to take communion. Uh, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and you receive that, you're welcome to take communion with us today.
While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body. You may take and eat. Then he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. You may take and drink. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. Lord, we thank you that when we didn't deserve it, you loved us and sent your Son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, just help us to walk in that forgiveness. Lord, help us to walk as you would have us to walk, as ambassadors for you, representing you, and being words of reconciliation to those around us. Lord, we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like all the children to uh, stand up. The children that didn't take communion, I'd like them to just stand up where they're at, and I want to pray for them. So, here you go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the children. Lord, we just thank you that you've blessed them. And Lord, we just pray you continue to keep your hand upon them. Lord, just guard them, protect them. Lord, just help them as they grow to know your love for them. Lord, just help them to trust you. And Lord, just let your Holy Spirit guide them. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, uh, we're going to have Anna. Allison's going to come up, and Anna's going to share. Um, she's the daughter of Josh and Julie Allison. Anna is a junior, or going to be a junior this year, next coming year, at Ohio State University. Uh, she's a member of a Christian ministry on campus called Crew, and uh, she just took a recent trip to Slovakia. So Anna's going to come and, and share a little bit about what, uh, what she did and what happened on her trip. Yeah, so I had the opportunity of going to Slovakia for about three and a half weeks with one of Crew's partnerships. Um, Crew has many different partnerships, one of them being with in, Slova in Slovakia called Agape Slovensko. And this was an evangelism trip to have conversations with Slovak students in hopes of getting them connected with Agape. So I'm going to start off with some of the pictures from Slovakia and then share more about the trip and what it was like. So on the next slide. Um, much, many of you probably haven't heard much about Slovakia, so a fun fact is that Slovakia has the most castles per capita. That's on the slide, that's the Bratislava castle. We were all able to go and see this castle and kind of go in the courtyard and it had a really cool, cool view. And then on the next slide is our apartments in Old Town. That was our building and then the street it was on. And then on the next slide, these are just some of the pictures of Old Town where we stayed. The picture on the left with the fountain is of the main square. The middle picture is a very popular walkway we would take to get to the bus station. And the last picture is more of Old Town close to the main square. Um, on the next slide, it's a picture of the local team that's currently living in Slovakia working for Agape full time. There are currently six stinters. STINT stands for Short-Term International Team, so they've been working and living in Slovakia since August, and four of them decided to continue stinting next year. There are also three full-time staff members in Slovakia. Two of them are from Slovakia and speak Slovak, and the other one is from Texas and has been in Slovakia since 2017. On the next slide is the picture of our team that came from OSU, OU, and Cedarville. There were 19 students, eight from OU, 10 from OSU, and one from Cedarville and then four staff members, all from OSU. On the next slide, it's about the spiritual realities of Slovakia. So the spiritual reality is very different from the reality here. As you can see, a lot of the denominations are declining. So 66% are Catholic, and that's declining. 6% are Lutheran, that's also declining. 1.5% are evangelical. 26.5% are atheists and others, and that one is growing. However, when students say that they are Catholic, they often mean that someone in their family, usually their grandparents, are Catholic. Slovakia is very big on family and tradition, so if some of the family is Catholic, that means that the whole family is. They don't understand the personal relationship part of Christianity. 
Another reality is that most people don't know who Jesus is. Jesus Christ is the most popular swear word for Slovaks, and for Christmas, they don't think of Santa delivering gifts. They have stories about Jesus Christ delivering their gifts. So when talking to students, if you said Jesus, they would associate that with Santa. So in our conversations, we would use God while having spiritual conversations because students would have an idea of who God is, and they would understand that. On the next slide, it shows our typical schedule for the week while we were in Slovakia. Monday and Tuesday, we would spend on campus, which I'll talk more about later, and it was also our prayer days. What I mean by this is that we would have a schedule where everyone would have one hour on either Monday or Tuesday that was dedicated to praying. Praying. We would have a prayer room at the apartments with prompts and prayer activities that you could use during your prayer time. We really emphasized surrounding the whole trip with prayer. And one of the things that they said in training was that our prayers would be in the soil long after our feet were on the ground. Wednesday and Thursday and Friday were all train days. I'll talk about that later on as well. On Wednesdays, we would have team bonding, which we called Summer Mission Fun Night. And that was just a way for all of us to hang out together for about two hours a night. And we would just have fun and spend time together. Some of the things we did were like trivia, karaoke, PowerPoint night. Then on Fridays, we would have celebratory prayer. This is where we would share conversations that we had that week and specifically pray for each person we talked with in a small group. On Saturdays, we practiced Sabbath. This looked very different for every person. Some people would explore more of the city. Some would go to souvenir shops. Some would have a slow day filled with community. It was up to you what you wanted to do. Then on Sundays, we would have our church groups. So we were all split into four different groups, and we would go to English churches near us and meet the people there. Then at night, we would have about two hours of worship. Our team would gather in our community room and all worship together. Some of the stinters would play guitar or piano, so then they would lead their worship. On the next slide, we have the different forms of outreach that we did in Slovakia. We had campus days and train days. We do this because most students go home every weekend to be with family, because family is very important to Slovaks. So these are pictures from campus, and then the Bratislava Hlavna Sanica, which is the train station in Bratislava. And then on the next slide, um, this is about some specifics on campus. So what we would do is we couldn't approach students on campus because they often thought that you would want something from them. So in order to talk to students, we would start volleyball, basketball, or board games and invite the students who are passing by or nearby to join our game and then start conversations while playing with them. So on the right is a picture of the sand volleyball court and that's one of the dorm buildings behind it. And the main point was just to be, for them to be around Christians and see how we talked with each other and treated each other while also having conversations with them. And then the picture on the left is a group of us waiting for the bus at the campus bus stop after we had been on campus all day. On the next slide, we have some of the train days. So train days were something new that they were trying out this year and they were trying to navigate. So these were often the most exhausting days since we spent so much time traveling to new places. It could range from like, four hours of traveling to nine hours, depending on where you were going or how long the train ride was. So the point of the train days was to sit with students and start up conversations with them while they were traveling home to see their family. We would get a sign-up sheet with a bunch of different trains traveling to all different places at different times, and then we would sign up for a train that we wanted to take. And then our train group would all meet together in the lobby and then walk to the bus station and bus to the train station together. And then we would buy tickets in Slovak at the train station, so we all learned the pronunciation and how to say it during training. Then we would find our train and platform using the screen that's on the picture on the left. And we would board the train in pairs and try to find a student and start up a conversation with them. I had my most successful conversations on the train because it was very easy to have a conversation while there was very little else to do. However, this is not the norm for Slovaks. Most people just board the train and pass the time on their phones. So having conversations was very different and many students were very grateful that we were interested in them and asking them questions about their lives. One example of this was a conversation I had with a girl. Um, I was with two other girls and she thanked us so much for talking to her and actually asked if she could all give us hugs afterwards because it was, she was so shocked that we took time to talk to her on the train. While having conversations with the students, we would try to bring up spiritual questions based on something they said or just change the topic to something spiritual. We often did this by asking questions similar to, what is your view of God? Were you raised Christian? What does being a Christian look like for you? And then we would listen to their answers and often that would allow us to share parts of our story and what Christianity meant to us. And then on the next slide is kind of a map of Slovakia. So I circled all the places I got to go on the trains. 
We would have about two hours in each city before our next train would leave. So we would often spend the free time exploring the city. So I went to Chernobyl once, Trenchin three times, Jolina twice, and Poprad once. So the next few slides are all pictures from these places. So the first one is Chernava. Our whole group went here on our first Friday there to get experience with the trains and figure out all the logistics together. So it was just like a training day. On the next slide, it's Trenchin. This was probably one of my favorite cities to see in Slovakia. There was a really pretty castle here that you could pay for and then you could go and see all the different parts of it. The top picture is the main part of the castle while you were walking up. The bottom left picture is of the view from the top of the castle and the bottom right picture is the train station and you can see the castle in the distance. On the next slide, it's Jelena. It was very pretty as well and we found a really good restaurant called Pork Belly that we all loved because the food was very similar to American food and it provided a layer of comfort for all of us. The owner actually used to live in Chicago and then he moved to Slovakia and started the restaurant. The next one is Poprad. To get here was about a four and a half hour train ride. So the day consisted of about nine hours on the train, but the mountains were beautiful and we were able to see the Tatras and two of the guys in our group hiked them on our free day. On the next slide, this was our last full day in Bratislava. We hosted a picnic in the park event this was used to invite all the students we met so they could hang out with us, have more conversations. And we could get them connected to the centers who were there if they hadn't gotten connected yet. We had about seven or eight new students come and then they also had some of the current Agape students come as well. And then the next slide is some of the stats from our trip. So every week we would know all the different stats. We had about 320 initiations. This means just trying to start a conversation with the student. Of those initiations, 227 of them turned into conversations. And then 105 of those conversations were spiritual conversations where we talked to them about their beliefs, and what their views were, things like that. And then 50 of those spiritual conversations turned into gospel conversations where we got to share parts of the gospel with students and oftentimes parts of our stories. And then from all of these stats, we had about 27 follow-ups with students. This means setting up a one-on-one -on -one with a student Continuing the conversation, we would invite a center to join as well to get them connected to the local team in hopes that they would continue to be consistent there. And then this is the last slide, and it's all of our team together for our debrief in Donovali, which is in central Slovakia in the mountains. It was really pretty. And the debrief was just a time for us all to reflect on the trip, worship, and pray over all of the students we met and the ministry in Slovakia. Thank you, Anna. I thought I thought that was looking at those statistics. I thought it was interesting that you know the 320 conversa or that they talked or inv invites just said hello, and then it got down to about 27 followed up. And that just tells us you know we need to be reaching a lot of people, reaching out because you only get so many that get serious and follow up. So you got to reach out to a lot of people. And that also means there were some no's in there, probably. <laughs> probably there's some no's. But um, it's just exciting to, to see what Anna was able to do. And I'm sure it'll be something that'll, you know, I think I've never done. Well, I went to Mexico and I always say, well, that's not quite the same. But, it, you know, it was, it was different. But it, it's something that kind of forms you and it opens your eyes and kind of see what life's like other than just in Wayne, Ohio. So um, <laughs> there is another world out there. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and take up our offering now. If the ushers will come forward. Um, we're going to pray for uh, Rose. Uh, okay, yeah, Jim's here alone. Um, Rose and Ez having trouble with her legs, so we want to keep Rose in prayer. And also Becky Hunker. Becky's having trouble this morning and, well, getting around, so we want to keep her in prayer too. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for opportunities. Lord, no matter where we are, no matter what we do, Lord, we have opportunities to share. So, Lord, we just pray that you'd continue to open doors. Lord, open doors and help us to see. Help us to see the doors that are open before us. Lord, we pray that you would be with Rose and Becky. Lord, we just pray that you just touch their bodies and, Lord, just strengthen them and just be with them and, and just help them to get better. Lord, we just thank you for your love for us, your faithfulness to us. Lord, we thank you for the privilege we have to give. We thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we just ask you to bless this offering now. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With you before we do uh, the second part of worship is that in your handout there are two dates for offerings for the Kentucky Mission. We're going to take up an offering for hygiene and cleaning supplies to send to the mission. We're working with the another ministry that Bob Carpenter started, and it's called In His Service. So they have transportation, and they're able to buy the supplies and then take them to Connie. So instead of collecting anything right now, for the next two Sundays, we're going to take up an offering so everyone has a chance to give to help buy the items. Thank you. Okay. Last week, we sang the song about being a child of God. And I, I just, I like that song. And, and you know, the part I like, it's, I am a child of God. Yes, I am. And I, I like that, yes, I am. You know, I like that emphasis on, you know, I don't just believe this, but yes, I am. Amen. You know, it's like, you know, it's not just something I'm saying, but this is who I am. Yeah. This is who I am. I am a child of God. And today I just want to look at three or four scriptures on what does it mean? And, you know, when you think about being a child of God, there's just so many things that, that means to us. But I want to just share from three or four scriptures. The first one's in First John, the fourth chapter, the fourth verse. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. That was talking about the spirit of the Antichrist, those in the world, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. We are of God. You are of God. We are children of God. We are born of his spirit that makes us his children. The Bible says, you know, when he created us, he created man in his image. He made us spirit beings. That's why we need to be born again, to be born of his spirit. And then his spirit unites with our spirit. But then it says that we have overcome. That we have overcome evil. As children of God, we have overcome, and we are overcomers. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You know, as you look around you and you see things that's going on around us, do you feel greater than that? Do you feel like, do you ever feel like, oh, this stuff is going to get me? Do you ever feel like, Oh, we're just going downhill, which we may be going downhill in some ways, but do you ever feel like, oh, we're all doomed? Well, we're not. Yeah. We're not. It says, we have overcome all that stuff. Hallelujah. We have overcome all that. Yeah. You know, if nothing else, we should have sympathy for those who are caught up in all of that, yeah. who have no hope. Yeah. Those that they have no hope. You know, what are they looking to? I mean, if you look to yourself for hope, that would be kind of discouraging. If you look to those around you for hope, again, could be very discouraging. And we laugh about it, and I, I mention it once in a while, but if you look to the government for hope, it could be kind of discouraging. By the way, that goes for both parties. Just so you know. Right. Just so you know. That's not my hope. Amen. That's not my hope. You know, my hope is in the Lord. Yeah. And greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. If nothing else, we have the answer. Yes, we, do. we have the answer. And so we need to conduct ourselves that way. We need to talk that way. We need to Act that way. Amen. You know, if that hope lives within us, that should make us different. We should not despair. And I'm not saying you can never have a bad day. But you never, we shouldn't have two. <laughs> you, know, you know, I mean, as Christians, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So why would I despair? You know, what can bring me down? You know, the Apostle Paul says, neither life nor death nor principalities nor power. He says, nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. So I have hope. And I'm a child of God. 
I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Then in Ephesians, the first chapter, the third verse, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. God, our Father, that makes me his child. And it says, has blessed us. Has, he's already blessed us. He's already blessed us. He's blessed us with what? With every spiritual blessing. Sometime if you want something to do, or maybe this afternoon you think about it, start listing what all the spiritual blessings are. You know, and we, if we start out, you know, we start out with, well, my salvation, you know, um, my forgiveness, you know, um, I'm blessed with God's peace. I'm blessed with his healing, deliverance, you know, and, but it goes on and on. I'm blessed with joy. I'm blessed with just so many, but every spiritual blessing he has blessed me with. You know, and I think sometimes, I know for me, sometimes I just have to stop and think about how God has blessed me. It's a good thing to do. Just stop and think about how God has blessed you. I was, Mary and I, we were, and Carol and Chet, was Carol and Chet's granddaughter that got married, and so we were at a wedding yesterday. And... So at the wedding, you know, and they haven't done this for a while, but um, at weddings we've been to, but at this one, they have the wedding dance where everybody gets up and you dance, and then they start counting down from how long you've been married. And so I go, okay. I think we're in. I looked around, and I thought, okay, I care on shit. We got them beat, not by much, but we got them. And, you know, it used to be Ron and Edith Labry when they were at a wedding we were at, we were always doomed. You know, we knew, well, we're going to get beat. And then, and then I thought, oh, we're the longest married. And I thought, well, that makes us old. <laughs> and then I thought, well, do I want to stand up and say, but here's what I really thought. I thought, what a blessing. Amen. What a blessing. And hopefully an example. Amen. An example. So, yep, sure enough, we won. <laughs> we got the prize of being the oldest people or the longest married. So, but that's a blessing. Amen. You know. We sang that song about the faithfulness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. So, so good. So, so good. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And it says, as your children, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. And you know, some, some struggle more than others. Some life isn't quite as pleasant. Some go through things. And I think a lot of times we all go through things. But you know, in the midst of that, we have to remind ourselves that I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. And God has blessed us. Yeah. He's blessed us. And that's, that's part of being his children. That's part of being his children. In Romans, the eighth chapter, the first verse, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. As a child of God, I am not condemned. This is a real big problem. This, I mean, a lot of people really struggle with this. Here's the hard part. You know, I know who I am on the inside. I know who I am. I know who I was. I know where I came from. I know the stuff I've done. And in spite of that, because I'm a child of God now and because he forgives me, there is now no condemnation. Hallelujah. I am not condemned. 
So quit condemning yourself. Amen. Amen. Quit condemning yourself. Sometimes and many times we are our own worst enemy. Yeah. Plus, I believe we have an enemy who's always working at us to tell us, well, you know who you are. You know, you can't, you're no good. You can't do that, you know. As a child of God, there is now no condemnation. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've come from. I don't care. There's no condemnation. God wants to help us to know that he forgives us. And sometimes the hardest part for us is to receive it. To receive it. And especially when he says it's free. Now, I can receive it if I thought I could do something, you know. Well, you know, if I could be good enough, if I could act right and do everything, you know, if I did it just right, God would forgive me. No. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And he forgives us. And so as children, as his children, we need to walk in that forgiveness. That we're not condemned. We're not condemned. You know, it's, it's our own selfishness and sinfulness that condemns us. And we're not condemned. We're his children. We're his children. So we need to act like his children. You know, that we're free from sin. You know, we're free to walk in forgiveness. We're free. Amen. We're free. And in Ephesians 2.10 it says, when we are his children, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. As his children, we are his workmanship. We're all different. We're all different. We all get different opportunities. You know, Anna got a chance to go to Slovakia. You know, an opportunity. You know, I and you know, I've taken a lot of heat over the years about, you know, I'm not a big person to travel and I don't go. I don't do a lot of mission trips. You know, I went to Mexico. That was a big deal. Two hours in Mexico. <laughs> you know, that was before it was even bad down there. I mean, that was a few years ago. But you know what? We are all his workmanship. We are all given a purpose. We all have opportunity. I say it's sometimes easier to go on a mission trip and fly 14 hours away and talk to somebody you don't know than it is to walk across the street and talk to your neighbor. Think about it. Think about it. You know, I can go fly somewhere and people don't know me and, you know, I can talk to them and... Well, how about just walking across the street and talking to your neighbor? You know, we all have purpose. We all have opportunity. God has created us that way. We're his children. As his child, we have things to share. We have things to share. He has purpose for us. I don't care who you are. He has purpose for us. I had a discussion this week with somebody about going to a nursing home. And, you know, that's, oh, no, I don't want to go, you know, I'm never going to a nursing home. Make my kids promise you'll never put me in a nursing home. Don't buy into all that. You know, number one, don't be making those promises. You don't know. But people, oh, I'm not going to a nursing home. What if it's opportunity? What if it's a chance to share with somebody? You know, Sometimes we need to see that, you know, God will open doors. Well, not that door. I ain't going through that door. Nope. I'm not doing that. I've watched, I've watched people. And I'm not promoting nursing homes. I'm not saying nothing about that. I'm just saying don't fight opportunities, whatever they might be. If you never have to go to a nursing home, God bless you. It's not the curse. You know, it, it's a place. I've watched people go to nursing homes. You know, I've seen people hate it. I've seen people who 
accept it and use it as opportunity. I've shared before uh, Mary's mom, in, uh, when she had a stroke, uh, she lived with us for a while, and then it just got to where she couldn't, we couldn't take care of her, and she went in a nursing home, and and uh, she was in a nursing home, I believe, nine years, I think. It was quite a while, and I remember she just she wanted to go be with the Lord so bad. So you know, okay, we'll pray. God will take you home. Well, He left her there nine years. You know. But, you know, she couldn't talk very well. You know, she could raise her fist, point at you. And once in a while, she'd get a word out. As a matter of fact, uh, Ken, Ken uh, Klein's here today. And Ken, do you remember Maybell? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, to this day, I have people come up and say, I remember your mother-in-law. Tell Mary, I remember your mom. Wow. She couldn't even get words out. People remember her. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Opportunity, purpose. We're never done. If you're still breathing, you have opportunity and purpose. You know? Age has nothing to do with it. And sometimes age opens more doors. I was talking to somebody at the wedding, and they were saying, you know, as I notice, as I get older, I get more blunt. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, that kind of comes with old age. I said, you kind of get to the point you really don't care what people think. So you might as well just say it. Opportunity. Opportunity. You know, we are his children. His children. And not just to be children. So we say, oh, I'm a child of God. I'm, I, you know, it's so special. And I just love, you know. No, because he's given us purpose as his children. He's got a plan for his children. Because we are the salt of the earth. We are. His children are. We're the ones that are going to make a difference. If things don't get better, you lay the blame at the feet of his children. Because he's given us that responsibility. So as a child, I have responsibility. You know, when you have children, your children grow and you give them responsibility more and more as they grow. And as they grow, you give them more responsibility. I believe one of the things in the body of Christ is we need to see that spiritual growth has something to do with responsibility. And the more we grow, the more we're required to do and share. And so we take our responsibility, we take our opportunities, and we do what God's called us to do. And we're never done. We're never done. Till you quit breathing. Then you can take a break. You know, we, we had a, a missionary friend, Paul I, and Paul, he, I don't know, he's something else. I don't know. If you, if you, you just have to, you, we see him following him on Facebook. This man's all over the world. I mean, he, he's always going somewhere. All over the world. And one time, Mary, we were talking about it. He said, you know, he says, I just got to keep working. He says, when I get to heaven, I have all kinds of time to relax. But he says, until then, I got to keep going. He had purpose. I got to keep doing what God's called me to do. I'm his child. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. You know, sometimes we need to look at ourselves and say, how do you see yourself? How do I see myself? What do I see when I think about me? Do I see, oh my, you're kind of a mess. Oh my, you, you've got problems. My, what, what could you ever do? Or do I see that I'm a child of God? Child of God. I am who I am because I'm his workmanship. Created in his image. Given opportunities to share, and to touch people's lives. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the privilege. For the privilege of being your child, to be one of your children. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. 
Lord, help us to see ourselves the way you see us. Not the way we see ourselves, but Lord, help us to see ourselves the way you see us. And Lord, help us to be what you've called us to be. Help us to be more than what we think we can do. Lord, help us to be all that you've created us to be. Lord, we just thank you for that. We thank you for your love for each and every one that's here. Lord, just bless them, encourage them, and help them to keep their eyes on you through this week. We just pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.